from Niue, we drive up the mountain roads to our next destination. This area is the most mountainous in Rwanda, where five of the eight volcanoes making up the Virunga mountain range can be found. Despite the terrain, agriculture thrives in abundance, with produce filling the market. Potatoes are grown in big plantations and are a profitable crop. Aside from agriculture, the area's main economic resource is tourism, driven mainly by the special wildlife found here. We made our way to Volcanoes National Park, home to two unique primate species endemic to the area, the golden monkeys and the mountain gorillas. This morning, we look for golden monkeys. It's not as difficult as the hike yesterday, but we still enter the reserve, and hopefully, I can survive this one again. We hike to the edge of the park, bordering some farmlands. We soon found ourselves inside a thick bamboo forest. These golden monkeys like bamboo shoots. That's why we're walking in this uh, forest of bamboos. One of the rarest species in the world, golden monkeys can only be found in the high altitude forest of the Virunga mountain range. Tumbling and jumping about, they are very sprightly and entertaining to watch as they feed in the mesh of bamboo. They say this family is a group of about 120. Oh, here's another one. Looks like a friendly fellow. Funny looking face. Maybe he probably thinks I'm funny looking too. Their bronze colored backs contrast with the bamboo as they flit around. The golden monkeys are normally up on the trees, but this time of the year, there are bamboo shoots on the ground, and they enjoy that. That's why they're on the ground pulling out some bamboo shoots. Sadly, these creatures are highly endangered because of habitat loss. But thankfully, tourism is now creating a lot of awareness and protection for the rare golden monkeys. For a period of time, poaching was a way of life in Virunga, and the wildlife and ecosystem suffered much. In the last 20 years, a big shift happened, and locals have embraced the commitment to preserve their wildlife, environment, as well as their heritage and culture. This is the mission of the Gorilla Guardians Village, a cultural village run by former poachers and the local community. I was glad to be back and was happy to share with the villagers their video from my previous visit. It was an immersive cultural experience into village life, teaching everything from hunting, traditional medicine to beer brewing and even wedding customs. The locals were warm and welcoming and we all had fun learning about Rwanda's vibrant and colorful culture. The next day was filled with anticipation as it was finally time for us to see the mountain gorillas. I was glad to see my friend Emmanuel again who took me on my first gorilla experience a few years back and will be guiding us on this trek. Everybody listened intently during the briefing. Four months ago, we come up with a new census where we counted 1,004 mountains. Wow, that's a lot. Still, still within three countries. So 1,000 is still small, but at least it's growing. It's growing. So we have a lot of babies. 
You understand the silver parts are doing good job. <laughs> oh, just too much jig. Very busy, yo. <laughs> That's what I learned from him. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And we are going to see a Godzilla family called Agasha with the 24 in the room. Wow. <laughs> and Agasha means special. We began our trek passing through farmlands and meeting some of the locals. So at this point, uh, we start entering the reserve and it's uh, very noticeable because there's a stone fence. And once we're up there, uh, we get a chance to, to meet the other trackers and we start tracking the gorillas. Depending on where the gorillas nested for the night, the hike can take a few hours. We found ourselves struggling through thick mud and jungle while avoiding stinging nettles and low-hanging branches. I know they're not just poisonous, but they hurt. So, why? Yeah. so you better don't touch them. It was tiring. Emmanuel lightened up the mood by teaching us about edible vegetation and sharing his gorilla stories. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Yeah, the juice is really good. <laughs> to say when the gorilla comes to you, you can always say, means a part of the, I'm part of your family, I'm not a threat. Three months ago, and Mr. David, I'll never forget him. We were visiting, and the silverback was charging. When he charges, we, all, we were all on the ground. <laughs> and he was breaking all the trees and then david was behind me he remembered i said you can say <coughs> for cooling him down yeah but he was panic and he was trying to say <coughs> but he said <coughs> <laughs> so please, if you're not good at it, it's better to be quiet. <laughs> Eugene and I, we try to speak in your behalf. Despite the exhaustion, we pushed on and kept climbing higher, eager to see the mountain gorillas. Their home is so lush and beautiful, and we couldn't wait to meet them. We're on top of the mountain, actually. If you take a look, it's just valleys, huh? Um, Almost at the peak. As we got into a clearing, we were caught by surprise as they passed in front of us one by one. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my I God. Sure about so now you can see all of them. It was amazing to be in their presence. Close enough to observe them and their behavior. When the babies, they're more than four years, they start being independent. So these are juveniles, they'll be climbing the bamboos. Hmm. They're very naughty. I like to adopt this little kid. <laughs> He's the foolish one. This is the mama and she's a pregnant. There's one who's alpha, a president, a king. So all the ladies in a group supposed to belong to that dominant silverback. But the gorillas, yeah. they respect the father, the old, until he dies. So he can still be with the family. Oh, yeah, he will be in the family. But they no respect more. him as, as, as a papa all his life. So the young kids will always respect the mother also, huh? Oh, yes. They respect each other. They are very strong community. They love each other so much. We could just spend time with them all day appreciating how they are so much like us. What do you guys think? How was your house this experience? For you, Kim? Yes, it's a spiritual. It will only Out happen in us. It's a very natural experience. You do it once in your life. Yeah, that's what I keep on telling everybody. At least once, no? Yes. You don't need pictures. I am so overwhelmed. Wow. <laughs> I can never get tired of this. It's so nice to be back. This is something I can do over and over again, never get tired of. And I'm very happy to share this with friends. It's something that uh, I cannot explain. Um, there's so much joy in seeing and being able to give that kind of experience and happiness to other people. Before we knew it, the hour was up. But the memory of this encounter will be with us for a lifetime. As 
As we spent our last night in Kigali, we look back at our journey through Rwanda. This land of a thousand hills has a thousand stories to tell of its heritage, its people, its wildlife. It was a trip worth doing over and over again because it is a story of healing, of acceptance, and unity. Made more meaningful when you are with the right company. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari. Ooh.